You have feelings, but you are not defined by your feelings. If you and I see that in a deeper way, it literally will change our lives. Here's what I mean. It is, how is it that people become debilitated by strong feelings? Well, it's not uncommon that someone, let's say, let's say, let's take a couple examples. Let's say a person is single, past an age, he or she feels that it's appropriate or normal to be single. Let's say a person's divorced and feels that it's a failure. Let's say a person is estranged from um, uh, his grown children. All of these cases might be a reason for a person to feel to associate strong, like deep, debilitating feelings of, of shame, okay? So those feelings of shame will visit more strongly at times and less strongly at times. Uh, they might be kind of ever present in various levels, but they get more intense, then they get less intense. When a person is confronted by those strong feelings and becomes paralyzed by them, literally like debilitated by them, what's happening is, is that the person is living in that feeling of shame, and then making a simple kind of like uh, equation, like if I'm feeling this way and it feels so real to me, obviously there's something truly shameful about my life, right? Like two plus two equals four. Strong, strong feelings of shame that I can't seem to shake. I have a life that is shameful. And the effect, of course, is in as much as a person identifies with those feelings, like that's who I am, that's my life, and there's no way out. So it just increases the probability of wanting to hide, wanting to kind of shut down, wanting to kind of withdraw or escape or all kinds of things like that. Now, I recently had an interesting interaction with someone that I'm, I'm talking with who shared with me that he has shame in the context of uh, estrangement from grown children. And sometimes he'll get visited by it very powerfully and he'll shut down even in the places of his life with whom he has a good relationship with his wife, with, with others that he loves, but he could really kind of get debilitated. Now, recently he shared with me that he was experiencing that kind of intense wave of shame. And he said to his wife, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing child grief right now, just so you know. And he commented that that was kind of new, like that was, that was a new thing. And it was very helpful because whereas in the past he would shut down and he couldn't look at it and acknowledge it, it would look like something personal with his wife or with others and they wouldn't understand him and they would, you know, it could get messy, it could get tangled and like personal and upset would just kind of radiate out. And here he was able to kind of see it, acknowledge it, and his spouse and others that he cares about were able to kind of understand, oh, okay, you're having kind of like a, a, a rough passage right now. And it was kind of more neutral. And when we paused to consider, well, how, how did that work? Like, how is it possible that he was able to shift into this, like calling it what it is, I'm experiencing child grief right now. Um, it, it made sense to understand that it's because he's undergone a transition. He is undergoing a transition in his relationship with his own feelings, whereas feelings to him, moods to him, looked like literally a defining dimension of his life. Like, I am my feelings. If I feel shame, it's because there's truly something to be ashamed of. I must run. I must hide. Um, he's starting to understand that, no, he has feelings, but he is not his feelings. Every human being has a flow of feelings. The feelings that we experience is part of the divine live feed, as I like to call it. There's an energy that is energizing all of life at all times. And we experience that in our capacity to draw breath moment to moment, because it's not our energy that literally allows us to kind of unilaterally, autonomously just decide, I want breath. There's an energy that we are making use of that's not ours. That same, in the same way that that energy shows up and allows us to draw breath, it also is showing up in the flow of feelings and moods that we experience and our capacity to understand that and see that for what it is, that we have flows of feelings, but we are not defined by those flows. It allows us an, a, a possibility of, of, of a real of freedom, you know, of not being debilitated, of not being kind of defined by things beyond our control. We are not defined by our feelings. We're defined by our capacity to see and choose truth. What's true about my feelings in this moment? It hurts. It hurts like a lot. 
but what's true about it? What's true about it is that I'm a human being that flows with all kinds of flows and I can be with the painful flows because what else is there to do in life except to be human and to flow with flows? Every human being in this world, when he understands that it's human to experience A, B, or C, then he kind of gets on with it and deals with it even if it's uncomfortable. It's the degree to which he feels there's really something abnormal, really something problematic. That's where he struggles. And that's where the possibility of seeing this basic truth, like we have a flow of feelings, but we are not our feelings. Look for that logic. Look for that truth. Look for that sense that is real for you, that you are ongoingly experiencing kind of ups and downs and flows. And you will begin to have a new relationship with your feelings, with a new, a new relationship with your moods, and you will open a door to a wondrous inner world of blessing and expansion and um, magic. <laughs>